Hi, Phil Schoenberg, Fast Pitch Power. There are four phases to the windmill pitch. There is the load phase, there is the reach phase, there is the track phase, and there is the fire and drive phase. Now, I am specifically leaving out pre-motion because for every pitcher you have, you've got a different pre-motion. A pre-motion is what's utilized by the athlete to get to the point where they're going to begin the first phase of their pitch. Whatever it is that makes you most relaxed and gets you from point A to point B in as efficient and effective manner as possible is what your pre-motion should be. So you're going to see a lot of different pre-motions and we're not really going to delve too deeply into that. So let's start at the beginning. And when I say that there are four phases, each phase must be completed to its optimal benefit to you as a pitcher. In full pitching, there is no separation between the phases or among the phases. It's one continuous fluid accelerating explosive movement. But if you break it down, you will see that each phase serves a critical purpose to getting you in position time after time after time to command the strike zone with maximum speed. Now, I'm going to do this in four sections so that you can see each one and you can understand how each one leads to the next. The first is the load phase. Now, this is really important. I once worked with a hitting coach who loved to say, you cannot unload what you have not loaded. And one of the examples that he gave was, you know, you go to the grocery store and you buy groceries and you want a whole bunch of groceries because you want it to last for a week or two weeks. And if you only can go to the grocery store and you only have enough money that day to buy two bags and you put two bags of groceries into the trunk of your car, when you get home, even though you may wish that when you open up the trunk of your car, there's going to be five bags there, there won't be. You'll be able to unload two bags because that's all you loaded. So how does that relate to what we're talking about when we talk about the load phase in windmill pitching? Your power comes from the ground up, and we're going to be talking about fastballs in these segments. Your power comes from the ground up. So your load must give you the power that you need starting from your feet on the pitching rubber to get you explosively off that pitching rubber into your reach phase, your track phase, and your fire and drive phase. And in order to do that, you need to load correctly. So again, we're not going to talk too much about the pre-motion, but let's talk about the load. Now, now um, recently, in the last couple of years, it's now legal to have your feet separated. So your Stride foot, I'm a right hand pitcher, so that's my left foot, is not necessarily going to be in contact with the pitching rubber at any point. You can, if that's how you were originally trained and you're still comfortable with that, I like that because everything has to work together. My hands, my stride, my drive, everything has to work together. So the sooner and quicker and more efficiently they get to where we want to get to, your pitch actually begins, the actual delivery of the pitch in power K, we'll get to that in another segment, then you want to have your stride foot as close to the pitching rubber, in my opinion, as possible. But there are a lot of girls who like now to have their stride foot a little bit. They feel like they get a little bit more bounce, a little bit more momentum. But what's important here is how you're going to set your feet. So when I go onto the pitching rubber and I'm getting ready to load, I want to put my body in a position where I can come explosively off that pitching rubber and get as close to the batter as I can legally, and we'll talk about that in the reach phase, without mechanical breakdown. So the way we teach our load is to get into basically what we consider to be a sprinter's position. Now when I say that, I have right now probably about 60% of my weight in my drive foot and about 40% in my stride foot. 
you will notice that I am on, and if you don't notice, I will show you here from the side, I am on my toes. At no point do my heels touch the ground. I am on my toes, on the ball of my feet, my heels are up, and I have a really good forward lean, my glove is tucked in to the middle of my body, and my pitching hand, if I'm doing a backswing, some girls like to be right here, I like that, no, no backswing at all, that's okay, elbows close to the body, but for those girls who do a backswing, your wrist is in a relaxed position, a little bit of a cup here, okay? and your heels are up and you're forward leaning. This is not a load. This is not a load. If I'm starting my pitch from this position and walking forward, I am not going to be able to generate the power that I need to get off that pitching rubber explosively. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the reach phase now, only because that's what your load leads you into. But one more critical element of your load phase is to make sure that your body is square to your target. So I have fast pitch power on the front of my shirt. I want fast pitch power facing my target as I go into my load, my sprinter's position. I want to take my hand straight back. I don't want my hand to be in a position where I'm going to have it go behind my body. If I'm doing a backswing, the power line is extended straight behind me, and I want to follow that. My ball, forearm, elbow never leave the power line. So here's my load position, and from here, heels up on the ball of my feet. I feel like now I better get moving, otherwise I'm going to fall over. But this is a good forward load. I'm not looking like I'm getting ready to sit down on a stool. I'm not starting my pitch from back here and just walking. I'm putting myself in a position where I can drive off that pitching rubber into a position that gets me, now, you know, I'm an older, kind of feeble guy at this point. I was able to glide with my dry foot on the ground almost three feet off the pitching rubber. So I'm now starting my pitch that much closer to the bat. Big advantage to you as a pitcher the closer you are to the bat without mechanical breakdown. So again, your load puts you in a sprinter's position forward as I go more forward and start to actually become explosive off the pitching rubber. I'm going to go from probably 60-40 to about 80-20 to about 90-10, and then I am pushing off. So in order to maximize your power, which comes from the ground up, speed is generated by your upper body. Power is generated by your lower body. We call it ground force reaction. In order to generate that power, you have to have a really good load. And it takes really good core and trunk strength to be able to perform that load consistently and to give you the ability to generate the power that you need. Next up will be the reach phase, which is what comes directly after your load.